During NFL Week 2, the Miami Dolphins beat the Ravens 42-38. to This was a wild game. I loved it so much. Like, oh my goodness. I was fired up. I was yelling on my Instagram story. I was so stinking happy. Uh, here's what I didn't love. The Ravens led this game 28-7 to at halftime, then 35-14 to uh, by the start of the fourth quarter. Look, I... I would not consider myself a Miami Dolphins fan, but I am very much rooting for their quarterback, Tua Tungavaloa. I'm very much rooting for uh, their head coach, Mike McDaniel. And I I wouldn't tell you I was rooting for Miami to beat Baltimore. I don't really care. People, in fact, think I hate the Ravens, and I don't hate the Ravens at all. I, I do not. It's very weird to me. Uh, but I, I want to see Tua do well. I, I would be heartbroken if they lost horribly and Tua looked bad. And that is not what happened, thankfully. Uh, but as someone rooting for Tua... What was really cool was that they came back and won. Now, it's worth saying before I get into the comeback and all the stuff that happened, I want to give a shout out to Baltimore. Uh, Two weeks in, watching the AFC North, watching the Browns, watching Cincinnati start 0-2 and look really questionable, watching the Steelers. They're fine. They're better than people realize, I think. But right now, Baltimore, the Ravens are the best team in that division, the AFC North. And Lamar Jackson, their quarterback, had four touchdowns in this game against Miami. Zero turnovers, ran for over 100 yards, had an incredible long run. Uh, Rashad Bateman, their former first-round receiver, had a 75-yard touchdown catch. And I think Lamar Jackson is throwing the football better than he ever has in his career. He looks outstanding, and um, I it's so cool the progression Lamar has made from his time at Louisville to where he is now. He's so much better of a quarterback. He's a better passer. It's unbelievable. Uh, he deserves the contract he's going to get soon. And uh, I, I just am really excited, and I want to say, yeah, people are hating on the Ravens' defensive coordinator. They had a great lead. They gave it up. Had a couple of rookie corners playing. Their defense wasn't at 100%. And to this day, uh, I don't think anyone, two weeks in, we're not very far into it, but yet Bill Belichick had no answers week one to the Miami Dolphins offense. And I think it's okay that with a bunch of rookies playing and a banged-up secondary, yeah, I don't know how you stop Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell. The Ravens didn't, uh, and by the way, the Ravens had the ball a lot in the second half. They scored 10 points. So it's not all on, the, all on the Ravens' defensive coordinator. But again, you look at the stat line for Lamar Jackson. He played incredible. It's hard to find fault. I think you just sometimes have to go, hey, they had us. The Dolphins played an outstanding game. And that's the story of this game, though. The Dolphins and their quarterback, Tua Tungavaloa. Dude, I am I'm so stinking excited. Week one, when Miami beat New England... I walked away wondering, what's going to happen if or really when the day comes that Miami plays against a high-powered offense that's going to score a lot of points? I wondered, can Miami and Tua keep up with that kind of offense, keep up with Justin Herbert or Josh Allen, or I think the Vikings are going to score a lot of points. We'll see how they play in Monday Night Football. I was worried that they would not be able to score enough points to win a shootout. Week two, we got our answer. Tua Tungavaloa, the Dolphins quarterback, was 36 for 50 passing, 469 yards with six touchdown passes and two interceptions, one which I think was a contested ball, and I would not find fault with him there. Uh, Now, I look ahead on the Dolphins' schedule, and there's a bunch of exciting games, games that used to make me very nervous that now I'm very excited for. I think Miami might be able to win these games. Week three and 15 against Buffalo terrifying, really good opponent. But hey, Miami can score a lot of points. We're now learning. Maybe they can keep up with Buffalo. Week four, Cincinnati. Cincinnati's got a no and 2 start, but they got a lot of great receivers. They're going to score points this year. I don't care who you are. Bad start, they'll bounce back. Cincinnati's dangerous. Uh, week six, Minnesota. They're going to score a lot of points. Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen. Week 14, LA, Justin Herbert. Week 16, Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers. Those are games that stand out to me on the Dolphins schedule on a fairly... A fairly favorable schedule, by the way. The Dolphins have a lot of winnable games as you look ahead on their schedule. But these six games are games that I go, ooh, that's a really good quarterback. That's a good football team, a good receiving core. For whatever reason, these are teams that can score a lot of points. Now we know, oh, Miami's offense is capable of keeping up. They can score and do it in a hurry. And again, no one yet has found an answer. Bill Belichick couldn't do it week one. Uh, The Ravens couldn't do it. We're only two games in, but so far, nobody has an answer to stop Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. In this game, Tyreek Hill had 11 catches for 190 yards and two touchdowns. Jalen Waddell also had 11 catches for 171 yards and two touchdowns as well. By the way, 
the tight end, my, uh, Mike Gusecki, the tight end of Miami, really talented as well. He had a great touchdown catch in the end zone. Great ball. Tua throws it high along the back line of the end zone. Mike Gusecki makes an awesome catch for a touchdown. So as someone who is rooting for Miami, I, now, I would not call myself a Dolphins fan. I don't have a favorite team in the NFL. But I love the people in Miami. I'm rooting for the people there. I love Mike McDaniel. He's an awesome head coach who I'm rooting for. His answers, his interviews, they're so fun. Tua, guy from Miami, someone who a lot of people didn't believe, or sorry, a guy from Hawaii who people didn't believe in early, who's a left-handed quarterback who's got an awesome family. I'm rooting for Tua. And as someone rooting for the people there in Miami, I've developed a new fear. I went from worried, I don't know that Tua's going to work, I don't know that they can score enough points, to now my fear is, oh my gosh, I hope Jalen Waddell or Tyreek Hill do not get hurt. I That's my new fear because, man, no one, uh, again, no one has found an answer how to stop them. And I'm really not sure what you do. I, I, I don't have an answer. They are just going off and they're going to keep going off this year. By the way, Mike McDaniel so far this year, two games in, looks like a home run of a hire as a head coach. Great hire. He's winning. Tua looks really good. The first two games of the year, Mike McDaniel, a rookie head coach, with no head coaching experience, man, has beat Bill Belichick and John Harbaugh, two legendary coaches, guys who have both won Super Bowls, who have a ton of wins under their belt. Go listen to Mike McDaniel in the postgame press conference. He's awesome. He's easy to love, easy to root for, um, and, and so far looks like a great hire by the Miami Dolphins. And, and remember, when he was hired, a lot of people were skeptical, by the way. People were saying... They should have hired Sean Payton from New Orleans. They were here. Mike McDaniel came out of nowhere and surprised a lot of people. And a lot of people were like, who is this guy? Mike McDaniel? Why is Miami, Miami hiring him? Well, so far, two games in, um, looks like a great hire. We'll see if that continues. You know, by week 17, it could be a dumpster fire. But right now, looks awesome. By the way, you know who I'm happy for right now? Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill, think about this. He used to live in Kansas City. I got nothing against Kansas City, Missouri, or Kansas City. What's the other place it's at? Missouri and, I guess, Kansas. <laughs> it's got border town. Uh, I got nothing against Kansas City. I know that in December, I would not want to live in Kansas City. It's very, very cold. Football season in Kansas City is a cold, tough place to live. Miami's not. Miami's warm. There's great weather. Think about this. Miami, Tyreek Hill now lives in Miami. It's warm. It's beautiful. There's no estate income tax. He's getting paid a ton of money. And he's winning, and by the way, winning because of the huge impact he's making. I would imagine Tyreek Hill has found his time so far in Miami to be very, very fulfilling. I'm happy for him. Now, two games in, uh, I think Miami fans just have to feel great. You're on top of the world. You have beat Bill Belichick, a longtime division rival. You beat the Ravens. Your Your quarterback had six touchdowns in one game, tying a franchise record. And coming into the NFL, uh, the narrative about Tua was that he compares to Drew Brees, where he doesn't have the biggest arm. Tua is not the most mobile quarterback we've ever seen. But with good coaching and support, Tua could become a guy who could succeed similar to Drew Brees. Remember, there was once a day a long time ago where a Nick Saban-led Miami Dolphins looked into bringing Drew Brees into their franchise. Didn't work out. He went to New Orleans instead. They brought in, I believe, Dante Culpepper. Since that moment... Dolphins fans have been having to live with the fact that they could have had Drew Brees. Then on draft day, the same day that Tua Tungavaloa was drafted by Miami, the guy drafted right behind him, number six overall, Tua's number five overall, right behind him was Justin Herbert. And Dolphins fans have had to live with the fact that, oh my gosh, we could have had Justin Herbert. I am really hoping for the sake of fans in Miami that Tua becomes the next Drew Brees. They could have had Drew Brees, they didn't. They could have had Justin Herbert, they didn't. Hopefully, the fact they could have had Justin Herbert isn't going to matter because Tua becomes the franchise quarterback they've been waiting for for a long, long time. Week two, against Baltimore, Tua looked like a guy who, frankly, he played like Drew Brees. Like, he really accurate, making big-time throws down the field, taking advantage of great matchups. I thought Tua played outstanding, and... I walked away excited and very, very hopeful for Tua and Miami. Now, next week, Miami plays Buffalo. The Buffalo Bills are a Super Bowl favorite. They're outstanding. It's a division matchup. Huge game and a tough game for the Dolphins. We know, hey, Miami can score a lot of points and they can do it in a hurry. 
And I am really curious, what is Buffalo's game plan to stop Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle last year in a playoff game against Buffalo? Tyreek Hill had 11 catches for 150 yards and a touchdown. And now this year, you also got to guard Jalen Waddle. He's alongside Jalen Waddle. I don't know what you do. I walked away from week two feeling very hopeful for Miami. They gave me hope that maybe they really could beat Buffalo week three. I'm stoked about Tua. I want to see Tua succeed so, so badly. He looked really good. And uh, this weekend against Baltimore, frankly, the offense reminded me of Tua's days at Alabama where... They got a lot of talent around him. He's just executing at a high level, doing the best he can, getting the ball out of his hands, putting it in the hands of really good playmakers. And guys are open deep. Guys are open short. It was unbelievable. I don't know why I didn't see this coming. I guess it makes sense. Hey, Tua looked outstanding at Alabama with really great receivers around him. It kind of makes sense that, oh, you give him Jalen Waddle, who, by the way, played with him at Alabama. Oh, and you give him Tyreek Hill. Yeah, of course they're going to be great. I didn't see this coming. I was nervous, and I've been kind of a wreck emotionally feeling like, do I really have to? If Tua doesn't work out, that's going to be really hard for me. I I love Tua as a person. I root for him. If he's bad, I I have to say it. I have to call it like I see it. That'd be tough for me. I, I would take no joy in saying that. I've been really guarding my heart. I even put out a video like I'm skeptical of Tua still. I'm not sure that I trust it. This is the first time into his NFL career, a quarterback I love and I want to see succeed. I saw him give me hope and he made me feel like, you know what? This, this could work out. This could be outstanding. So now the only fear I have left is I just am praying that Jalen Waddell and Tyree Kill do not get hurt. But I think I walked away feeling encouraged after week two. And I can only imagine how a Miami Dolphins fan must feel. Tua looked awesome, huge comeback win. And be easy on the Ravens. I, I I don't know what you do on defense to stop Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle. No one has the answer yet to do that. We'll see what Buffalo can do week three. But I walked away feeling very, very hopeful about Miami after NFL week two.